We're going to continue our look at frameworks for deep learning in natural language processing by taking a look at an implementation of a recent model that appeared in the computational linguistics literature. And this is a model that I'm partial to, not just because my student worked on it, but also because it's a relatively simple model that uses the majority of the mainstays of modern natural language processing, but without a lot of unnecessary complexity. It manages to get relatively good results without the overhead that you'll see in a lot of other models, for example, later in this course. So let's take a look at what this model does. This model is called a deep averaging network, and it is a classifier. So it takes a bunch of words, a document, a sentence, what have you, as input, and then outputs one of k classes. And in between, it represents the words as a continuous bag of words. So what does this mean? A continuous bag of words means that each of the words is going to be represented by an embedding. So this function here. And then we're not going to do anything fancy with those embeddings. Each embedding is a n-dimensional vector, say 300-dimensional vector. We're just going to add them all together. And this now becomes the representation of the document. And what we're going to do with this representation of the document is we're now going to take that representation of the document and we're going to apply a linear transformation to it, defined by these parameters w and b. Then we're going to pass that through a nonlinearity element-wise. And if that's a good idea, let's do it again. And so this is why we call it a deep averaging network. It's deep because there are multiple layers of these nonlinearities from here to here. In the example implementation, we'll only show you one nonlinearity. And then finally, you take the output. But these nonlinearities are put on top of just a simple average of the words. And for many applications like sentiment analysis, this is really all you need. You don't need deep analysis of the syntax or the word order to get reasonable results. And the word embeddings plus these nonlinearities can help you be relatively competitive. So let's see how you'd actually implement this in PyTorch. So recall that in PyTorch, to create a new model, you need to define a class that extends the neural network module. So what we'll do is we'll talk about the definition of the parameters of the model, then we'll talk about the forward function, and then we'll finally talk about how to train the model. So first things first, let's look at the initialization. So we need to tell it the number of classes that the classifier can output. We need to tell it the vocab size, how many words it can possibly see. And then we need to tell it the dimensionality. So the dimensionality of the embeddings, so how many dimensions will the words be represented as before we take the average. The model also needs to know how many dimensions we'll use to represent the words before we take the average, and how many dimensions to use in the hidden layers for our model. After we put it through the linear transformation, how many dimensions will our representation of the document have? And in this case, we'll also use 300 for that, as well as the embedding dimension. So now we can set up our parameters. And so we need the embedding layer here. So this is going to represent each of the words in our vocabulary with a 300 dimensional embedding. And these are parameters that our model will learn. Next, we need parameters for the linear transformation and the nonlinearity. So the way that we're going to do this is through a module called sequential. And so sequential is very simple. The sequential module will take a series of other modules and pass one module's output into the next module's input. And so here we have a linear transformation that takes the output of the embeddings and then multiplies that by a matrix, adds some bias term to that, passes it through a nonlinearity, and then we have another linear layer. And then finally, for the end classification, we have a softmax layer. So we've set up the parameters. And although on this slide I've drawn arrows showing how one piece of data flows 
throughout the model, the model doesn't know how to do that yet. That is set up in the forward function. So here we've only defined the parameters. It doesn't know how to put them together. That needs to happen in the forward function. So let's see how that happens. So in the forward function, we take some document as input, and then we look up the embedding for that word, and then we're going to take an average of that. So this happens here. So we first add everything together and then divide by the length. That gives us our continuous bag of words representation that we want. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to pass that continuous bag of words representation through the classifier that we set up in the constructor for our class. And so this now gives us the final layer. And that final layer will then go through our softmax function. And so this is everything that we need. So we have a document, we represent it as an embedding, we pass it through our multiple layers of non-linearity and linear transformations, and then we finally do the softmax classifier at the end. So now we have everything that we need. We can now train our model. So training the model looks exactly like all of the other examples that we've seen thus far. You set up an optimizer. For each example, you zero out the gradients. You make a prediction. You compute the loss. And then you update your model. So very simple to get started with a model. You can easily define models, then quickly train them. You can make slight tweaks to the model as well. So there are other things that you can do to this model to make it a little bit better. You can do batch normalization to improve things. You can do drop off to improve things. But this is the basics of the model that you need, and you can still get relatively good results with this very, very simple model. So to reiterate, the beauty of frameworks like PyTorch is that you can very quickly build up a computation graph out of atomic expressions and create very complicated models. And as you build up these models, by combining various expressions together to generate parameters, including things like word embeddings, you then create a model that you can pass into an optimizer, and that optimizer will automatically figure out the gradients and the updates to the model to optimize whatever objective you care about. And this framework has allowed research to speed up significantly in the last several years, and has helped people compare models, apples to apples, with fair comparisons on the same data with similar optimizations, and has helped differentiate implementation from modeling. So hopefully this has been a brief introduction that will get you started on building your own models with frameworks like PyTorch.